Are you looking to anneal brass but don't want to spend thousands of dollars for an induction annealer? No problem. I'm going to show you the EP 2.0 annealer. It won't break the bank and it does a fantastic job. Here we go. One of the number one questions I get is, I want to anneal brass but I don't want to spend thousands of dollars for an induction annealer. What should I do? And I tell people plain and simple, buy a flame annealer. They work, they have a good track history over time, and you know, for the large part, they're pretty simple to use for people. Now, one of the downsides that always comes up with flame annealing is how do you know how hot to get it? How do you know if you're over annealing, under annealing? Uh, you know, I mean, you could go into countless ways that that can be done. So really what I'm gonna focus on is how the machine works, how you adjust it, and I will show you with the lights off, you know, kind of what he recommends as a way to adjust it. But annealing is one of those things where even with an induction annealer, I find that I'm constantly tweaking kind of the under and over on what the settings are. So you're going to want to do testing. You're going to want to anneal. You're going to want to see what's giving you the best sizing results, what's giving you the best results on target. And then you're going to want to repeat those, which this, because of how it works, is going to allow you to do so. First off, what do you get? Well, you get the annealer. It's a very small form factor. Uh, he's made a couple updates to this over time. And believe it or not, almost every time he's updated it, he's lowered the price. Uh, he's one of these guys that just believes that as he gets prices cheaper, finds parts, uh, you know, makes efficiencies that he should pass it on. Uh, I think when I first started hearing about these a few years ago, they were just under 300 bucks, like 290 or 280. Uh, they've since gone down to 268. They're now on sale for 238. And believe it or not, here comes a code, and that's going to get you another 5% off, taking it down to $226, which is the lowest these things have ever been. But you get the annealer, you get the uh, torch head, you're going to get the propane holder, and you're going to get a little cooking pan to hold the brass. I will say that uh, you can now get, this is designed for a small diameter propane tank, which I'll show you, uh, but he does actually have a large propane. So if you have more like those camping cylinders that are a larger diameter, he does have this available as well. So basic operation, let's take a look. We're gonna turn it on. You've got a speed control over here. Obviously the bigger the number, the faster it goes. Once you get this set, all you need to do is record your number here for whatever kind of brass that is, and then you've got a measurement. And then this disc is designed so that it spins. You can see those little finger holds. It spins in and out of this entire cylinder so that if you need taller brass, shorter brass, you can make those adjustments. Again, once you have this set for your particular brass, simply take a measurement from the disc to the outside, make a note, put your number aside with it, and guess what? You're pretty much set anytime you need to anneal that brass. It, it really is that easy. The other adjustments you'll make along the way, and let me just put a piece of brass in here. Obviously, you need to adjust this, which has a thumb screw here. It's going to come out and allow it to rotate. So you're going to want to position that so that it is holding the brass in place. Different diameter brass is going to need a different angle on it. And obviously, the longer or shorter the brass is, you're going to want to move this in or out. This is easy to adjust. It's probably not something you need to take a note of. If I was making notes for uh, trying to uh, replicate my consistency, it would simply be the timer number and the distance to the plate. So this piece adjusts, and then up here, you've got a slight adjustment with this slide, and that is going to allow it, when operating, to feed the brass in. One thing to note, wherever your plate is, you're going to want this to be just a little bit forward of it and i'll show you why if i move it back so that it is pretty much in line with this plate watch what happens when i try feeding it's going to want to go head first okay so if i pull it way out here's what happens it's better so you're better off having this little feed plate further out than too far in and you can see the way this works is it's a single feed it's simple. There's no auto feed. There's no stacking brass. You would simply be doing this, putting your pan under here to catch the hot brass. And I'm gonna show you where the propane sets up here in a second. I just wanted to cover the operation first. 
So again, very simple. And a lot of people really love this simply because of how easy it is to use. On button, speed adjustment, pull your plate in or out until it matches up with where you want your um, brass to be running on here and getting your brass with the uh, propane torch in line. So let me do this. Now that I've shown you, I'm going to set up the propane tank and then we are going to show it in action on the brass. Here's what it looks like with the propane tank set up. So this is simply tension screws under here. You just put this cap on and you just, you know, you can tighten this down if you want to, but really just hand tight is all you need. And you just want to make sure that you have this pointing the direction you want before you tighten it down. In this particular case, you want to try to get it aligned so that it is hitting the brass and, and not hitting too much of the unit if possible. Uh, I've got it set up so that it is pretty much in line height wise with the brass. And for the purposes of how Todd on his uh, site here uh, tells people to anneal with this unit, he's looking for something where you're pointing the flame essentially at the neck shoulder junction here. And you want the tip of the flame at about 50% or just when you have a really nice blue flame there. You want that tip just barely touching the junction and then you're going to adjust the speed until as it makes one full revolution, it just hits glowing red and then drops out. It is a little bit of, you know, black magic, uh, you know, figuring out exactly the right thing to do here. Uh, but let me just give you a, a tour of what it looks like when you have it running. And this is all a bunch of old 284 brass that I have. So I'm not super, uh, you know, concerned with, um, you know, what we do to it. But what I am going to do is right now, the brass is to the shoulder is just about the length here. I want to bring this out. So we're going to lengthen this a little bit. We're going to loosen this thumb screw and we're going to bring this wheel out. Okay. And I want to make sure that it's still going to turn. Okay. And what that does is that helps get the brass out away from the drum and ensures that, um, you know, that we're safely operating. So I also need to bring out the feeder, make sure that this is now feeding. Okay. Let's try a couple more just to make sure. So you see that working. Now let me go ahead and turn this on and then we'll turn the lights off and show you what it looks like with the lights off. He does say that with most of your mid-range uh, rifle brass, you're looking at somewhere probably in the high 20s to low 30s as a good starting point. So that's what we're going to do here. And I'm going to stop this just so we can make sure this flame is about as close as we want it. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and turn it on. So we've got it turned up. Now we're going to turn it down. And we're trying to get just a nice blue flame going there. I'll show you when we turn the lights off in a second. Keep in mind, this bar is going to get very hot. And I, right there, I've got the tip of the blue flame hitting the shoulder neck junction. I'm going to pull the camera off here and see if I can show you up close what this looks like. And then we'll turn the lights off and I'll show you what it looks like. So here you can see that the tip of that flame is right in that shoulder junction. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit here. And that might be getting just a little hot. Let me speed it up just a little bit. But this gives you a really good idea of what that flame looks like. So let me turn off the light here. 
and I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the lights off. So here we go. You can see that it's just starting to glow right as it drops. On this particular brass, it's no turn neck, so it's a little thicker, and I've got it set to 20. But did you see how it just was starting to glow right as it fell? That's the recommended kind of drop point for Todd on this unit uh, as he designed it. Again, as you do this, your, uh, you know, kind of settings may vary, um, whether you a little bit under anneal it or over anneal it compared to that. But you can see it looks real good the way it's coming through, the way that flames right in the pocket. And then right as it gets to hot, boom, it drops down. So let me get the lights on. We'll kind of go over a couple last things here. So here's some final thoughts on this. One, you do have to make sure, and he tells you, like this isn't affixed in any way to the unit. I'm sure somebody that was more mechanically inclined or wanted to go on Amazon might be able to buy some kind of an armature so that it could stay in a fixed position relative to the unit. It's just not designed that way. Again, cost-saving feature. So if you have this set up where you want it, and you're using it on a bench, you know, it's one of those things where you may say, well, I'm going to take a Sharpie and kind of make a couple marks so I know where it's lined up, or I might get a board that I put it on so that I can, you know, put some marks on the board and have this lined up the same way every time. You might just adjust it a little bit when you do it. But here's the most important thing. While it is operating, make sure that you do not bump this out of position without realizing it, or your brass will not be annealed properly. Now, flame annealing versus induction annealing, I'm not going to get into the merits of each of them other than to say he understands that the induction annealing uh, by all, you know, typical measures is going to be more consistent um, just because of how it works. But it comes at a cost. And, uh, you know, again, his thing is I want to have a product that people can use that isn't going to break the bank if they don't need it to. So if you're doing 100 or 200 pieces of brass, you know, you're just saying, look, I want to anneal. I want this to look good. Um, you know, you can see here it has your traditional flame annealing on it. That doesn't mean that it's annealed properly, so don't mistake that. But, um, you know, if you want to anneal brass uh, with a flame, it, you know, there's plenty of ways you can do it. Like I said, with the Templac, you can do it with the glow test. Um, you can test, you know, you can set different settings for times, load them up, go shoot. Um, nothing beats testing. You know, I don't care what you read on the internet. If it doesn't shoot well on target, what's the use in doing it? But, you know, the bottom line is that this is a, a, a unit that fits a need. The last little thing I will tell you is make sure you don't anneal primed brass. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but I've seen people do it. Uh, I've seen people do it more times than you think. Um, make sure everything has been decapped or has been fired. Um, decapping it typically if you're going to anneal is a good way to go if you're not sure um, otherwise if this gets too hot you will blow a primer that can cause uh, potential injury or damage uh, as always wear safety glasses when you're doing this make sure you don't have anything flammable open gas propane tanks like there's a lot of things you obviously need to take into account with flame annealing that you know i'm not saying you shouldn't or don't have to take with induction annealing but you know, open flame is open flame, right? And, um, you know, it's just something to consider. So anyway, EP 2.0, again, here's the coupon code if you want to take advantage of it today. I can't guarantee what's going to happen in the future. So if you're watching this, you know, two years from now and that coupon code isn't working, I'm really sorry. But, uh, you know, it's the way it goes. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, hit me up below. And uh, as always, I appreciate everybody watching. You guys have a good one. We'll talk later.